Hello, everybody, and good morning, it's Lisa. I am the Senior Learning Manager at the Jewish Museum. Thank you so much for joining us for our Families Live Museum Mornings on the theme of stories today. We are so pleased to have you here because this Museum Mornings marks the start of a very special series for the month of August. And we are so pleased to announce our Family Summer Challenge. So this August, the Jewish Museum London challenges you and your family to complete your Arts Award Discover at Home. Arts Award is a nationally recognized certificate awarded for engaging with and participating in the arts. So every Sunday for the month of August, we will release our usual families live museum mornings videos, but you can use these videos during this month to help you complete your Arts Award logbook. So for more information on how to participate in our Family Summer Challenge Arts Award Discover at Home, visit our website and you can click the link that is in the description of this video for more information. So we're pleased um, to announce that today. So as I mentioned, our theme this week is stories. So I'm going to share with you an object from our collection that might remind you of a popular story from the Torah. So I'm going to share my screen now so that you can see this object. Okay. So take a close look at this object. So we can see that it is a drawing of a person, of a man, but who might this person be? Let your eyes wander all over the drawing to see if you can find any clues that might help. What do you notice first? We can see a line drawing of an older man. He has a long beard and is wearing lots of robes. He is also barefoot. Can you see his toes peeking out from under his robe? Around his waist, we see a small pouch that is attached with a belt. In one hand, he is holding an object that looks like a tiny boat with a roof. Near his other hand, a dove approaches with an olive branch. Hmm. I wonder, do you know any stories from the Torah about a man who builds a big boat to stay safe during a flood and at the end sends out a dove to check for dry land? If you said Noah's Ark, then you would be right. So this is a drawing of Noah from the Torah story, Noah's Ark. And this is from a collection of drawings by an artist called Simeon Solomon. Simeon Solomon was a British Jewish artist who made lots of drawings of important people and characters from the Torah. He drew lots of characters from Torah stories. This particular series, including this drawing of Noah, he drew this in 1854. So 
so it's quite a long time ago. He used pen and ink to make his drawings. He drew them on paper in his sketchbook. And at the bottom of each of his drawings, he would write the name of the character. So you can see at the very bottom of this drawing, the name Noah. So for today's activity, we are going to have a go at drawing a character from one of our favorite stories. So I'll stop my screen share now so you can, so I can see me a bit bigger. So we're going to draw characters from our favorite stories today. So you're going to need some paper to draw on and a pen or pencil. So I've got some paper and a pen all ready. I, if you want to uh, add any color to your drawing, you might want to find perhaps some colored pencils or some felt tip pens as well. But if you don't want to, you can just use a pen and a piece of paper, just like Simeon Solomon. I wonder what story character you are going to choose to draw. Do let us know in the comments. I have decided to draw Tinkerbell from the story of Peter Pan because I really like that she is a tiny fairy. So once you decide on which character you're going to draw, you might either want to look at an image for some inspiration to help you get started, or you can use your imagination to draw your character. Using your imagination is a really great skill to have. So I'm going to start my drawing. So you might want to map out your drawing so that you make sure that you have enough space to fit it on the page. So you might just want to map out where you put the head and maybe where the feet are going to go. So I'm going to just continue my drawing that I started earlier and you can get started on yours as well. It takes a lot of patience I think, to make a drawing. It takes a lot of skills. I wonder what skills you need to be able to draw. I think you would need to be really focused I think you would need to concentrate a lot on what you're doing. I also think you might need a lot of patience to draw because it can be quite relaxing to draw, but it's important to take your time when you're drawing as well, and to not rush, I think. And you can choose if you want to do a really complicated drawing with lots and lots of detail, or you can just do a really simple sketch or outline as well. It's completely up to you. And you don't have to worry about if your drawing is good or bad, because the important thing is to just have a go at trying something different and trying something new. So if you want to add some 
shading to your drawing. So here's my drawing of Tinkerbell so far. So you can see, so you can see that I've drawn her face and kind of outlined her body. And I'm in the process of shading in the wings. So I'm going to show you a technique which is called cross hatching. So to do this, you first draw lines going in only one direction. So for example, I might draw lines on Tinkerbell's wings like this that are going vertically, okay? So this will add some sort of shading to the drawing and give it a little bit of depth. So you can see now I've got the lines going just in the one direction on her wing. Now it's called cross hatching. So then I want to draw lines going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to do that now. So you can see I'm starting to draw the lines going kind of across the vertical lines. So hence the name cross hatching. So when I fill that all in, it's going to be a lot darker um, than if I had just left it with the lines going in one direction. How are you getting on with your drawing? And you can take all the time that you need to fill out to do your drawing. You can even come back to it later if you decide you want to take a break. So you can see now I have filled in the lines going in the opposite direction and it just kind of gives this darker shaded effect to my drawing. So I'm just gonna keep adding a few bits and pieces to my drawing. Maybe I'll give Tinkerbell a little necklace and perhaps add some lines onto her dress and maybe a cute belt as well. I wonder how long it took Simeon Solomon to do that drawing of Noah. I also wonder what made him choose to draw Noah. What questions would you ask Simeon Solomon about his drawings? Perhaps you would ask him about how he did it, about how he came up with the idea, or you could ask him how long it took him, or perhaps if that was his first draft, perhaps he did a lot of drawings of Noah before he settled on that final version to put in his sketchbook. So think about what questions you might want to ask Simeon Solomon about his drawings. So I'm just gonna put the finishing touches onto my drawing of Tinkerbell. And what I'm going to do is write Tinkerbell's name at the top. So here's what my drawing looks like. And I decided to write Tinkerbell's name because in Simeon Solomon's drawings, he wrote the name of his characters as well. I wonder how you are getting along with your drawings. 
you can let us know by sharing your thoughts in the comments below or by tagging us on social media using at Jewish Museum LDN. You can also use the hashtag Museum Mornings and hashtag Arts Award Discover at Home. So I do hope that you have enjoyed doing some drawing with me on our favorite story characters and learning a little bit about the artist Simeon Solomon and how he made his pen and ink drawings of characters in the Torah. So don't forget that you can use all of the information and the activity from this video to complete your family summer challenge, Arts Award Discover at Home. Do click the link in the description to find out more and to get your free logbook. So this brings me to the end of my museum morning session. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to tune in next week on Sunday, the 16th of August at 11.30 a.m. when my colleague Emma will be leading another activity that you can use for your arts award on the theme of gardens. So thank you very much and see you soon. Happy Sunday.